All right, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about this camera, and this is Sony's A7R Mark III. And I just recently switched to Sony from Canon. Uh, I've been shooting Canon for about five years, so I'm gonna touch on that and touch on why I think this camera, at least for me and what I do in the hunting and outdoor space, is going to make my life a lot easier. This vlog is definitely for all the camera junkies out there. I've been getting tons of questions about this Sony and my thoughts on it, so let's dive in. So there are three main reasons that I switched to Canon, and really these three reasons will, I think, help me do my job better in the hunting and outdoor related field. And that first reason is these Sonys have a silent shutter. All right, for comparison's sake, this is the Canon 5D Mark IV in its silent shooting mode. It's still pretty loud. You can still hear that. Like, it is not. It's quiet, but it's not that quiet. And here's the Sony in silent mode. I just took like 15 photos there. You didn't hear a thing. So, um, I think this is going to be epic for bow hunting, uh, shooting photos of wildlife, really any time that uh, being completely uh, quiet is is a need. All right, my second reason for switching is the size and weight savings. Again, here's the 5D Mark IV from Canon, and here's the A7R III from Sony. A little bit smaller. Ounces-wise, the Sony is five ounces lighter than the Canon, and I'm always packing two of these around, so I'm already saving 10 ounces right off the bat. The lenses uh, are also a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter. Not that much, but man, you know, anytime you're doing remote work or living out of your backpack, whatever, ounces definitely matter, and by switching to Sony, I'm definitely gonna be saving a few pounds. So the third main reason that I switched to Sony was the video capabilities of this camera are absolutely outstanding. Uh, it shoots uncropped 4K uh, on my Canon. When I would shoot 4K video, it would do 1.6 crop. If you're shooting 100 mils, it's now shooting the video in 4K at 160. So it's great if you wanna get in tight, but if you're trying to shoot any wide angle stuff, I just couldn't really do that with the Canon in, in 4K. This camera also has peaking and zebra stripes, which is a great video feature. You can also shoot 120 frames per second slow motion shooting in 1080 with this camera. Uh, the most you could do with the 5D Mark IV was 120 in 720p. Um, so again, just improved quality of video across the spectrum. Uh, there's also multiple different uh, log profiles, which allows for color grading. And as I continue to expand into uh, video and do more vlogs, uh, I think these cameras are really gonna help me to be able to just continue to create cool and unique content uh, more so than I really ever have been able to in the past. All right, so those were the three main reasons that I switched. Now let's jump into some bad things that uh, I don't like about this camera. If I don't like, I mean like, willing to deal with because I still think they're so awesome. But uh, that first bad thing is uncompressed raw images out of this camera are 85 megabytes of file, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, like the, the highest res image that I was pulling out of my Canons was like half that, like 40 megabytes. The downside to this is that, you know, now you're gonna get way less life out of your memory cards. You're gonna have to have more memory cards. You're gonna have to have more hard drive space to store everything. Uh, the upsides to this massive image file is you do get a little bit increased uh, clarity and quality. Each image out of this is like, it's almost 8,000 pixels wide. With that, you get a lot of creative cropping abilities. You can kind of crop the photo however you want without losing quality. All right, next, the other bad thing about this camera is when you're dealing with really large photo sizes as well as dealing with 4K video, you need a computer that can handle that and, and help and, and be able to process that data very quickly. And right now I've got a, a late 2013 model MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of RAM, the fastest processor um, at the time and the fastest and best graphics card for um, what it had at the time. And it cannot process it. That's a bummer. Uh, there are there are workarounds, uh, specifically in Premiere. There's a thing called proxies, uh, which basically allows you to down res your video. So instead of working with a 4K video clip, you're working with like a 720 video clip and you can do all your edits with a 720. And then when you go to export, you can export it back at, uh, at 4K. So, th so there are workarounds um, for that, but I'm still having issues with lagging files and everything. So I'm probably gonna have to upgrade computers just to be able to read and handle these files. The super fast memory cards used in these cameras for uh, to do two things, to be able to shoot burst mode as well as shoot 4K video. They are SDXC UHS-2 cards. They have super fast write times, like 300 megabytes per second write times, but with that, they cost a pretty penny. <laughs> and so this is a 128 gig card. 
This is 250 bucks per card, and I have two of these camera bodies. You know, when you're on a 10 day trip, you gotta have a lot of memory cards. So I, you know, I've already, I basically already dropped thousand dollars just in upgrading to these faster memory cards, and I'm probably gonna need more. Downsides to Sony, definitely costs money uh, to switch. Another thing with the Sony that I don't love, but I'm totally willing to deal with, is it has a tilt screen, which uh, is great if I'm holding the camera way down low. I can I can hold it way down low here, and I can see exactly what I'm shooting. For holding the camera way up, like way up high, trying to get a bird's eye view, this is as far down as it'll tilt. So if I'm holding it way the heck up here, I can't. It's harder to. I can't like flip it all the way down and really see what I'm shooting. Uh, the other thing, and this is more of a vlogging issue, it's a tilt screen, goes up and down, but I can't like flip it sideways or I can't flip it all the way over so I can see what I'm shooting. So that's kind of a pain. I'm always having to check and recheck shots to, to see what I'm filming. So pain in the rear for vlogging. A couple other issues that just comes along with shooting a mirrorless system is this camera is a mirrorless. And so it doesn't have a mirror covering the sensor. When I pull this cap off, like that's the sensor right there. And the problem with that is that there's not a mirror covering the sensor like there is with the Canon. Canon and then it pulls the cap off and there's a mirror that's covering the sensor right now. And so really what that mirror that mirror does is protects the sensor from getting dust and debris on it. So with the Sony, I uh, after day two of shooting with it, day one was like vlogging indoors just like I am now. And day two, I was outside shooting wildlife photos, probably swapped lenses maybe two or three times. And after two days of shooting, I already had dust spots on the sensor. When you're shooting photos, it's not as big of a deal, but when you're shooting video especially, it's really hard to get rid of dust spots in video. And so you're gonna have to be very conscious of those dust spots and watch for them. Um, you're gonna have to have a blower with you or pressed air uh, to blow off those dust spots. Probably gonna be spending more money taking your camera in to get professionally cleaned uh, more than you probably ever would with, with a, a DSLR that has got a mirror. All right, lastly, this camera, when you're shooting in silent mode, this camera is using the electronic shutter. And so what happens is you'll get a thing called rolling shutter. And rolling shutter is when the image is exposed either from the top down or like left right, like either vertically or horizontally, instead of all at once. So what can happen is when you're shooting really fast moving objects, um, again, the image won't be exposed all at the exact same time. It'll be exposed like really quick. And uh, what'll happen is you'll get some like bending of subjects as, as well as if you're just shooting indoors uh, and shooting under uh, incandescent lights you get some weird lines and it'll look really bad and so if you're looking at this camera to be a action sports camera moving or capturing really fast moving subjects as well as like inside uh, lighting stuff that you want uh, and you want a quiet shutter it's probably isn't the camera for you but enough on the bad I knew all those things going into it, and I really do think this is an epic camera. One thing I really like about it is it's got a really accurate autofocusing system. I've never had a camera that I could basically put my autofocusing points either way up to the left or to the right or like anywhere but the center and have great um, autofocusing. All my previous cameras I've ever used, whether it's a DSLR or a mirrorless system, if I wasn't using that center autofocus point, I would have big time inconsistencies. A lot of times if I would say I'd use a focus point over here, it wouldn't even like pick up what I was focusing on and so I was having to use that center autofocus point and then reframe. Another thing I really like about this model is they've updated the battery. So the battery for like the A7R2 uh, didn't last very long. I think guys were maybe getting 500 shots per battery uh, which like does not compete at all compared to Canon. But these batteries, updated battery, it's a bigger battery, more capacity, same battery as the A9. I and mean, I've shot a whole day both video and photo and never had to swap the battery. You know I, I don't know the exact like number of shots I can get with this one, but it's, I, you know, I haven't had any issues with um, battery life. And here's a little tip, uh, Brett Sang actually taught me this one. If you go into your camera settings here, you turn on airplane mode, that'll prevent it from just transmitting signals and you actually extend your battery life that way. So a little tech tip there. Another thing that's sweet about these cameras is you can charge them with uh, USB power. So whether if you have a battery brick or even just like plug it into your car, like you can just plug it right in the side here and you can charge your, your camera that way. So that's super handy. Okay, next I'm just gonna talk about like two differences between DSLRs and uh, mirrorless is this camera when you look through the viewfinder here you're not actually you're not looking through the lens like you would with the DSLR you're actually looking it's kind of like looking at a TV screen you're looking at a digital display of what you actually see it can be kind of trippy for some people and it's also cool because you're seeing exactly what you're going to take a photo of so you're seeing what how those 
um, adjustments that you're making are going to affect the image, which is which is super handy. One big improvement I've noticed over this camera in comparison to pretty much every camera that's either got a display screen or a digital viewfinder is that there's really no lag time. By that I mean, say you're shooting a panning subject like this with some of the older cameras, I would be to here take shooting a photo and my my display wouldn't catch up. My, like I'd be shooting here, my display would be over here just trying trying to catch up. So there'd be a lag time. Uh, but with this camera, I haven't noticed any lag time. I can, I can do this and it, there isn't any lag, which is a big improvement. The other thing with this camera and compared to a DSLR is that on all my DSLRs, right here, you've got a digital display of everything that you're seeing. And with this camera, you don't have that. You have to look through the viewfinder or, or look at the display screen on the back to see kind of which, which settings you're in. And also there isn't like designated buttons across the top here to, for ISO, white balance. You, you have to do that all um, on the back through these buttons here. And, and all these buttons are all customizable, so you can make it pretty dang quick uh, for adjusting settings. I would I would say though, it's it's not as fast. You can't make adjustments as fast as you can with the DSLR, but it's still pretty fast. All right, so those are my initial thoughts on Sony's A7R Mark III. So far, I've been digging this body. You know, I, I don't have that many field days in it. I, I can't speak to its durability yet, but I've got a lot of faith in it. I know a number of other photographers that take this camera all over the world, or, or Sony's in general all over the world, and, and they've never really had issues. But I will continue to share my uh, personal experiences with this camera as they come. All right, that is a wrap for today. I hope everybody has a great Christmas. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. That helped me out a ton. All right, we'll see you next time.